that's a lot of trouble. I think they're about five, five and a half grand each. So. There are various things that you can do in the menu. Uh, quite frankly, uh, I think for your first film you might not be wanting to play with a shuffle. If you are, <coughs> I want to know what you think. Um, and uh, the, actually, when you pick up the camera, if you need a handbook, ask the guys if they'll let you have a handbook. This is quite useful to find if you really want to get into the camera. <coughs> Who wants to play? Um, oh, I suppose I was just say something about getting the media off, didn't I? Uh, the best way to get the media <coughs> off is to go to the media position. <coughs> this for this just to keep still for a minute. A little bit of, uh, you know, recording a bit of something there. Just keeping that hot spot out. <coughs> anyway, there we are. There's a bit of uh, gash footage there. We should find that now in the. Uh, if we go to the media position. It's taken a while to come up. Oh, there we are. Okay, and that will be it there. That's a bit of media we've got there. Okay. It may come with like a USB cable. You have a USB. The USB, you'll you'll struggle to find the USB, I suspect, because on the EX, it is tricky to find. If you press this release on this device here, so you can move it up there like that, it's here. It certainly is on the EX1. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Nice. Okay, so you, go, you can plug it in there. Do you want to come around and have a look? Yeah. I'll do this again for the, those of you who, are not, uh, not, who can't see. That's the, uh, it's just underneath that little panel there, and, oh. and there's a release on this which allows you to turn it. I don't know why it's you're nice worried. how they put like, labels on everything on the camera to tell you, like, it's yeah. got like, uh, it says <coughs> release on it. Yeah, some, some it doesn't company. tell you what it's releasing though, does it? No. Nah, I wouldn't have there, you see, I want to complete. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, uh, yeah, um, I mentioned the switch underneath here, didn't I, for enabling the zoom demand. Uh, you've got a control for the shutter under there. You want, if you want to get into shutter stuff, then you know you do need to do a bit of reading about it. But if you plug that in there, and if there are certain, I can't show you because I have not the USB there, but you plug that in. Um, what you should do is open uh, a project like Adobe Premiere um, and make sure that it's the project settings are <coughs> the same as the, what you've shot in. If you shot in 1080, 1080i, 25 frames or something like that, you, f you select a sequence that's in that, that's, 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 and then everything, the workflow is smooth. You then go to import on your um, import uh, on your file menu, and import, and it'll, it'll offer you these clips. You import them. It's as simple as that. And then you can play with them. But not a lot to it. Um, you could take the cards out and put them into a card reader, and I understand that the culture of the department that issues these cameras is that you use a card reader. Now that's fine, I'm not, I'm no objection, and they can, have their own, they can have their own opinion. I think it's better to take the stuff out in a, on a USB read, because I think the fewer occasions that you remove the cards from the card slots is probably better. It's always better not to keep unplugging and plugging things, isn't it? Whereas uh, if, you use the, um, if you use the USB read, I think that's probably better. Somebody will tell me that it's more expensive to replace a USB connection than it is a, a card slot or something. I don't know, but that's the way I would I prefer to do it. And then you're using the camera effectively as your card reader, and uh, you know you can uh, you can get all your stuff off like that. So um, <coughs> I'll let you have a play with it. I think. Bat oh, let me just have a word about batteries. A uh, word about the battery. Do not change the battery with it switched on. So make sure the camera's switched off. There it is, it's in the off position. And there's a battery release, which I think is on the side there. The battery release is where my index finger is now. Press it and slide it that way. And don't let go of the battery, because it will fall out on your foot. And it is quite heavy. Okay, and I've got some actually, I've got some bigger ones for this model. I've got one that's 
about that thick. Okay, it's twice the thickness. Um, I'm putting it back in. The same applies. You put it in like that. Make sure you don't drop it on your foot. And slide it to the left and click it in place. And then switch on. So if your battery, this is the point, if your battery goes down and you're going to replace it with an, a fresh battery, you do need to switch off. Even though the camera is dead because the battery's run down, you need to switch off to get the old battery out and put the new one in. And it's the putting of the new one in that's the problem. It, it does that start to check the battery there? I think that's really when you're charging. I wouldn't like to do that. Uh, I'm not sure quite how that works. You just press it and it just lights up. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's wise to do it when it's in the camera, quite frankly. No, I wouldn't. You've got battery indication yeah. here. I, that's something that I think that when you're charging, you need to know how much is in it before you yeah. charge. The other thing is, I don't, and this won't affect you, but you shouldn't charge these batteries unless they're completely discharged. I have a tendency to let my batteries run down. I'll just switch the camera on and just let the camera run the battery down before I recharge it again. They seem to develop a memory. I don't know how it works. And there's a lot of, a lot of old wives' tales talked about battery uh, recharging batteries, but I, 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 I'm sure they do. Uh, if you use half, if you use half of the life of a battery and then charge it up again, it then thinks it's only half of a battery. You know, I don't know why. But, so don't do it. Uh, discharge. You wouldn't if you are involved in taking, doing a long shoot and you've taken extra batteries out in a battery charger, uh, and you discharge one. Don't charge it unless it's absolutely, you know, finished. Uh, lots and lots of outputs and things. I don't need to talk about these, but you, the camera will be supplied if you want it with component out, AV out, uh, HDMI out, um, if, if you need them. The, 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 the guys have got certainly some of those cables, if not all of those. They've certainly got a, a, a USB for this connector. SDI, that's effectively uncompressed video. Um, <coughs> You know, I don't know what it is, 284 megabits per second, I don't know, it's a lot. Um, so you can get pure, um, pure video out of there. Again, that's another connector. Oh, no, they should have them. It's a little rubber, rubber connector behind me. Okay. I'm not going to fight that. <coughs> that's how that works. If you were doing a shoot, a uh, multi-camera shoot, and you were lucky enough to have SDI, you know, com equipment and mixer and stuff, you could actually do it. Definition of multi camera shoot. Um, well, I'll leave, you, I'll leave you to have a play with it if I may. Um, the, the thing we didn't check, and normally we would do, <coughs> is just to just check the plates on properly. I mean, it's not only an issue of, uh, of looking after the camera.